and welcome to the Coaches Series on SSN 24-7. Today we have Michigan State Volleyball Head Coach, Kathy George. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks, Seth. Great. Now, you've been the head coach at Michigan State since 2005 after 11 seasons at Western Michigan. Before then, you spent time at Texas Arlington and North Dakota State. You've coached in NCAA tournaments, Sweet 16s, and you were a four-year letter winner at Illinois State. But let's start at the beginning. When did you first start playing volleyball, and did you play any other sports growing up? You know, it's it's kind of odd because, I mean, obviously I'm a little bit older than most, but uh, back in the day I started at 10 years old uh, being a volleyball player. Um, at that time I was at a parochial school, and they made you choose between cheerleading, basketball, and volleyball. And so it was in the fourth grade, uh, or sixth grade actually, when we started that f- for them. But I had to make a choice, and I chose volleyball at that time. Now, were you naturally taller uh, than the other I was. girls? I was very tall. In fact, I'm the height I am right now. I was that height in eighth grade, oh. so I was the tallest boy, girl, whatever in the school. So I was uh, very tall. I uh, never grew another inch, even though I was hoping I would. Playing at Illinois State, did that help you as a coach understand how your team thinks and interacts with each other now? Well, it definitely does, but uh, the weird thing about me is I started coaching at that same parochial school. When I was a freshman in high school, they asked me to coach the sixth grade team, and I took them all the way through their eighth grade, and uh, that's when I knew I wanted to be a coach, so it, it came pretty naturally to me. When I went to college, I was thinking, is this what I want to do, or do I want to go to the college level? Do I want to coach at the high school level, or what is it? So um, one trip to the junior high when I was doing my student teaching told me I wanted <laughs> to do the college age, and, um, and so then it went from there. What made you want to become a coach at such a young age? Well, it was I was asked to do that, and I just um, once I started coaching the sixth graders, and you know I took them for three straight years. I, I just really grew attached to to the team. I saw their progress. I was excited about the fact that they had been improving at such a rapid rate, and and uh, so I just was hooked at that point. My dad was, in, and my my brothers. I'm, I come from a a family with two older brothers, and I have no sisters, and I just have grown up around sports. My dad was a collegiate athlete, and my brother as well. So I just I just was always around athletics. So sports runs in the family. Yeah. You You've been the head coach since December 2004. How did you wait? How did you make your way to Michigan State, and what made you interested in taking this job? Well, I was, um, you know, I went to Western Michigan and was there for 11 years and really enjoyed my experience there. It wasn't until Shelly Applebaum called me and asked me if I'd be interested in the Michigan State job that uh, that came around. And so I, I um, you know, I obviously was very aware of Michigan State, was aware of the Big Ten and the level of volleyball that was being played there. And I knew I wanted, uh, wanted to go into the Big Ten, and Michigan State was a great option. And, and uh, obviously I was sold on it and had been watching them from, you know, just down the road for many years. Now, this will be your 11th season. What's the key to running a successful program, and also what's one of the more difficult aspects? You know, I think that in this day and age, recruiting has become such a big part of uh, collegiate athletics. And so, you know, it it was when I first got started, you know, you were you were working really hard to get your team to know X's and O's and training them and fundamentals and all those different types of things. But it has evolved into this uh, major business, right? And so the recruiting aspect is, is huge. And if you don't have players that don't ca- care how good you are as a coach, you're not going to be able to, you know, coach them up to a level that they're not capable of. So you have to get out there. You have to get to know high school coaches, um, travel coaches, all of those. You have to really identify great talent and great character and so that you're able to bring them here and able to go the distance. You know, I mean, without them, you're not going to get there. So um, I do believe that you can <clears throat> you can coach up a level, but I don't think you can transform everybody into Cinderella. <laughs> so. Uh, during your time as coach at Michigan State, do you have a favorite game or a good story or favorite memory for us that you won't ever forget? Gosh, I've been doing this 27 years, mm-hmm. so I think I have a lot of different different memories. But, you know, I just think – I just always enjoy um, just the stories of, you know, these players that come back. I had a player who was um, inducted into the Hall of Fame over at uh, University of Texas Arlington where I was. And uh, so she was this great kid. And um, when I took over there, there were six – uh, six seniors and only two juniors, and that was it for the team. So I went into that program, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've got to recruit. And I came into the summer preceding that season. And so I had to get on recruiting, and at that time there were Prop 48. Uh, that was when you didn't have the test scores or the academics to get to school, so you had to sit out a year. And I, I got on to this kid from um, – 
from Houston, Texas, and she was struggling in uh, in school. But it, her parents were both killed in a car accident at four years old, or when she was four years old. So grandma and grandpa took six kids into their house, and and I went on my home visit, and um, you know, and I, I met this girl, and uh, she hated the mornings, and she really didn't want to get up, and uh, just I was going, oh my gosh, I'm taking a chance here, I'm taking a chance, but we needed players, and she was a phenomenal player. Well, she came into school, and I paired her with this girl from Chicago that came in, who was just like this um, totally anal person. She had all her stuff color coded when she's studying a great student, the whole thing. And they became roommates right now. This day, she was just inducted to the hall of fame. She's the Dean of students in new Orleans and she's a a state championship coach and has gone on to get her master's degree and everything else. And so she's a phenomenal story. And I just saw her this last weekend when I was recruiting and I'll tell you what, I love that kid and just listening to her speech at the hall of fame and um, just those kind of memories when you have people come back and you see how much success they have. It's just outstanding. What's that mean to you that you've built such strong bonds with your former players? Oh, that to me is the world. You know, I, I love, I love it, and I have kept in touch with the very first teams. And my uh, that the girl that I talked about that was the uh, she is now the head coach at Western Michigan. So she took over for me after I left, and you know they're all doing great things, and and I'm just very proud of uh, my former players. You've been at Michigan State since 2005. In your opinion, what's changed the most about the Michigan State University, whether it's the campus or a program? Is there something like that that's changed that you've noticed? I think the campus is continually growing and uh, getting stronger and stronger in, in all the academic fields. But I, I believe that, you know, I, Mark Hollis has really put a stamp on the program and the way he's brought coaches together and the way he's uh, really worked to get us um, get us as a team, you know. And that's really something that's unique at this school. I don't know if everybody recognizes it because, you know, I've been around. I know what's going on at other universities. But Mark has pulled these coaches together, and we really do work for each other and work as a team unit. And uh, and that I think it's a real people approach. Uh, there's there, it's about relationships. It's about getting the best out of people. It's about helping people. So I've I really like that, and I think it's unique. Now, if you're hungry and you're on campus, uh-huh. where's your favorite place to go for some food? <laughs> hungry and on campus, I think you'd have to say Brody, right? Because yeah. you can eat like you can eat so much, and so I usually, if I go there, I can't move for the next two hours <laughs> because you just go from station to station, and uh, yeah. So I, I would say that that's it. Okay. Uh, but I think all the cafeterias are pretty pretty strong. You know, you go, you do, you hear other universities, and the cafeterias aren't like ours, so we're, we've got it made. How much time do you spend on recruiting, and when you are recruiting, what traits do you look for in players, whether they're physical or mental traits? In other words, what makes the perfect Spartan for you? Oh, wow. Okay, so um, what is what is um, your first part of the question? How much was, time do you how spend? How much time? Yeah. Uh, so much time and we can recruit all year long so I just got back from New Orleans and Orlando and before that Chicago and um, I I believe that like our assistants it looks like in a say four weeks in a month uh, we're out at least three of them of almost except for the playing season when we're in season the recruiting season which goes pretty much from January through July we're out every every three out of four weeks mm-hmm. so it's a lot of time and um and we're on the road but we're finding those players and and so what makes the per- perfect spartan i mean obviously we have to have the physicality that can win a national championship that's what we're looking for so if you're not athletic enough um and there's going to be mismatches with the teams you're playing which is the big 10 i mean we'll probably have eight to nine teams in the top 25 rated at the beginning of the season um because of that we have to get kids that can can um physically match up with the best best out there. So first of all, it's that. Then once you've seen that, now you have to see the character. You have to see the, you know, the way they play. Do they make teammates play or are they selfish? Are they, or what is their deal? Um, do they have that drive? Are they a fighter? Do they give up? Do they, are they prima donnas? Are they, uh, are they um, high maintenance? You know, you look at all these different types of qualities and you say, what do we want for a Spartan? I want a gritty, I want a gritty fighter. I want a fighter who's going to, you know, go the distance because we're going to get knocked down a couple times. It's just going to happen because of the league we're in so how how do you cope and how do you get back up and and do you want to be a spartan you know like what do you understand what that means and are you willing to do it because i'll tell you what it's not easy to be a student athlete it's not easy to work as hard as we do but it's it's surely it's a a great opportunity and a great experience now you mentioned how strong the big 10 is what's it like playing in (laughs) such a tough conference (laughs) Well, it's, um, you know, and, and this was interesting because I came from Western and um, I felt we had a really good team. And in fact, we had beaten Ohio State and Michigan. So we, we felt we were pretty good. But what I realized when I got here, it's the night in, night out experience. And so we'll play Friday, Saturday night. So you might play the number fourth ranked team on Friday, but you're backing it up with the number sixth ranked team on Saturday. And that's a common occurrence. So you're, you're really, it, you have to regroup from night to night. 
So what it means to me is there's a lot of teams that go through weaker leagues and they shine and their record might be, you know, just this uh, glossy like, you know, 29 and 1 or whatever it is. Uh, but when we match up with them in the in the tournament a lot of times, you know, we we're we're it doesn't matter where we finish in the Big 10. We really are strong because we've been knocked down and we've had to get back up and we learn that every victory doesn't mean you're great and every loss doesn't mean you're horrible. So we have to really just bounce back and I I really think that it's the the resilience that is being taught that is a great life lesson, and it's something that I think makes us very special and and what I enjoy about being in that type of league. I think that if you finish in the top six in the in the um, Big Ten, you can win a national championship. That's how strong it is, and I'm not lying when I say that. It's and you've seen it because we've had um, several teams that have finished in the fifth, sixth spot that have been in the final four of the final match, and it's amazing to me. But it's like okay, you just can't worry about being first in the league all the time, which is you know that's hard for Spartans to handle. They want to be first in the conference, and I get that, and I want that ring. I'll tell you. <laughs> but but the thing is, it's like it's not easy to do, and I know that we can have success no matter what. We just have to keep plugging along. We keep fighting and uh, put ourselves in a position to do it all. So now maybe uh, there's anything you'd like to change, but if there is, would you want to tweak anything in the college volleyball? Is it a rule or anything on the court that you'd like to see changed in the game? Or do you think it's just perfect the way it is? Oh, no, I don't think it's perfect. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I just I really am, um, I'm really I don't know what to do about certain things that are happening in sport today. But it's early recruiting is really getting out of hand and out of control. And I've had eighth graders on campus. I've had freshmen that are looking to make their decisions. Um, there's been a handful that have committed recently in their freshman year. And you just really want to see it slow down a little bit. And I don't know how to do that because every coach, if you don't offer a kid, you've lost the kid. So it's kind of, it's just, it keeps cycling. And it used to be where it was juniors and now it's sophomores and now it's freshmen. And this is one, this has all been happening since I've been here at Michigan State, how fast it's going. But it's because it's big business and the parents, you know, are seen out on these travel trails and the coaches are out there. I just get back from two tournaments where we're all, I mean, there's tons of coaches sitting on freshmen in high school's courts. We've seen eighth graders. I was sitting there with several of my counterparts in the Big Ten on an eighth graders court every single match she played and and it's just it's the way it is and it's uh and they know it they've been on campuses already and um it's you know and I don't think the parents want that either but I don't know what the answer is uh because I think you're pretty young to make those kind of decisions and I think your life changes a lot in the next two years and and you're going to continue to see transferring and and things like that if in fact we don't slow this process down to give them a chance to catch up maturity wise have you noticed more of a fan base for volleyball in recent years? It seems like whenever I turn on the Big Ten Network, I can catch a volleyball game. Yeah. Have you noticed that fans are more Well, the Big Ten has led the country in attendance uh, for all the years that I've been here, and it's been that way for a very long time, but it's continuing to get, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's getting followed more and more all the time. So right now, uh, Michigan State, we rank ninth in the country in attendance, and, um, and so, but so does, uh, there's three other teams ahead of us in the Big Ten, maybe four. And more ninth. So it just shows you the kind of rankings we have in the Big Ten. So anytime you come to catch a match at Jenison Fieldhouse, you're seeing one of the best teams in the country. So we're, we have quality product all the time, and you're seeing seeing some knockdown drag outs, you know, just kind of great fighting brawls. And so that's what's been doing it. But the volleyball is great. The Midwest has really grown in volleyball, and it's one of the highest uh, participation sports in the country. And it's not your backyard volleyball anymore. I mean, this is like th- these these females are athletic. I mean, our team is huge. We go from six six to six three in the starting front line, and um, and so we're we're athletic. We can jump, we can move, and it's fast. And so you know, it's becoming really popular. But it's a lot of fun. Now, we mentioned earlier that sports run in your family. Mm-hmm. I believe you have a son that's going to mm-hmm. walk on at the he's Michigan already there. State basketball They're already working. team. Can yeah, you tell us about him? Summer school. Well, Connor's, uh, Connor's uh, an interesting bird. He's the second of our two, and um, my other son was a baseball guy. And, um, and then uh, Connor came through, and Connor always wanted to keep up with TJ, which was my older, and he's four years older than him. So um, in every type of sporting event or anything that ever existed, Connor was trying to trail along with those guys. So he always thought he was four years older than he was. So very competitive kid. Um, it, it was torture anytime he lost in whatever I did with him because he'd want to win. And uh, just a competitive kid who, you know, grew late. He, um, he didn't, he, 
he he didn't grow until in between his sophomore and junior year, and he grew six inches. So he uh, he had always been a big kid, and then he didn't hit the growth spurt until late. So he thought he was going to be small, and I, I assured him he was going to hit puberty <laughs> at some point. He did, but it was uh, you know it was a little bit late. But he's uh, grown up as a Spartan, been to all the games, he's been to the Final Fours. He's you know he's uh, loves it, and he's so excited to be a part of it, and thinks it's. He's just he goes. It's awesome. He he says it's awesome. So that must be very exciting mm-hmm. for you and for yeah. him. The 2014 team made mm-hmm. the NCAA tournament. You won a series, but when looking ahead to the 2015 season, what can fans expect? Is there any athletes waiting to break out, and who will be the leaders of this team? Well, um, Seth, when we go back a couple years, uh, we had a very great group that took us from. Um, they put us in four consecutive NCAA tournaments and two Sweet sweet Sixteens in that time. So we went back-to-back Sweet Sixteens, and then last year we finished in the second round, lost to Stanford in four, which Stanford only lost one one match of the season, and they were they were a little nervous. But we had we had to replace a lot of those kids that got us to those two Sweet Sixteens, and we brought in some young great players. In that time, we brought in the sixth and the seventh best recruiting class um, in a row, and they were the freshmen and sophomores joining with that group. So we were very young, played a lot. Uh, freshmen and and uh, they're starting to they're starting to come into their own and you could see it towards the end of the season we stumbled and fell a little bit early but started finishing strong so we're very excited about this year it's probably our most physical group we've ever had um, we have to kind of make sure that skill wise that we're doing the things that we need to do that we're staying resilient we're getting tough and we put you know we we, we go after it because it's going to have to be one of those uh, physicality wise my gosh uh, Chloe Rodig has been outstanding she we have three. We have three um, honorable mention All Americans back. So, uh, so Rachel Monarch was a freshman and she got that honor, and Chloe Reinig was a sophomore. And then we have a transfer in Autumn Bailey, who was the Big East Player of the Year, um, and uh, in an All American out of Marquette that transferred in here. Those kids will come into there. But Alyssa Garveling just got back from um, just got back from the USAA two team where they won gold, and uh, she's phenomenal. She's a six four kid out of Holland Christian, and uh, I anticipate her being an All American. I think um, before it's all said and done, and Alyssa Fitterer's phenomenal. Phenomenal, and she uh, was all region. She was she was a couple votes off of uh, the the being an all American as well. So we've got a lot of talent. We've got to get some ball control. We've got to do better in the backcourt. We've got to do uh, do a little bit more a, a better job to solidify our serve receive and our and our side out game. So those are the things we're going to be focusing on. Sounds like you have a lot of talent coming yeah. back. Should be very exciting. Yeah. Coach George, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the Coaches Series. It's been a pleasure to have you on. We look forward to seeing what's in store for the volleyball team this season. From SSN 24-7, I'd like to thank our producer, Rob Bennett, for helping set up and run the board. And for Spartan Sports Network, I'm Seth Newman. Go green. Thanks. Go white.